Here in North Carolina, we actually have a rescue funds provision in our law. So doesn't that mean that it's unconstitutional? Uh, I think so. Uh, that's certainly my interpretation. And one of the things that I think is really interesting is in that Supreme Court decision from last year, there's a footnote uh, that explains that North Carolina and Maine have rescue funds provisions that are substantially similar to uh, the provision that they had that, that they were holding unconstitutional. So we're actually referred to in a U.S. Supreme Court opinion. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, and I, last year I published a case briefing that discussed uh, this Supreme Court case. And at the time I, I concluded that if we apply that case to our own rescue funds provisions and North Carolina rescue funds provisions, uh, they wouldn't they wouldn't stand up in court. And that's exactly what happened about a month ago uh, in May. A federal judge here in the Eastern District of North Carolina said the rescue funds provision is unconstitutional. You can't enforce it. Now, this is being discussed at the state legislature. And as you and I are talking, this is still under discussion. But Jeanette, is there a requirement then that the legislature goes in and changes the law to, to strike down rescue funds? Or does the U.S. Supreme Court decision just automatically make our law void? I, it makes it, a, a, I believe, unenforceable. But because the statute is still there, it's still on the books, uh, what the proposed legislation would do is um, effectively a house cleaning, housekeeping kind of measure where it would remove that provision just so that there's, there's no dispute and we don't have to keep going to court over it.